good afternoon. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Sneha. I work with uh, the Center for Internet and Society, which is a non-profit research organization based in Bangalore and Delhi in India. Uh, firstly, uh, thank you so much to the organizers for this uh, wonderful opportunity to present my work here. Uh, CIS is a non-profit research organization. We work on uh, various areas related to the internet and society, um, internet governance, access to knowledge, um, digital archives now. Um, digital humanities has been um, an area of work uh, for me for the last couple of years. And for uh, my presentation today, I'll be talking about uh, some of um, some of the work that we've been doing around uh, mapping questions around digital humanities uh, with a focus now, of course, on digital cultural guiding practices. So to begin. Um, the increasing prevalence of digital technologies and internet within uh, academia and creative spaces over the last few decades has led to a transformation in how we imagine interdisciplinary and multimodal forms of knowledge production today. The emergence of new fields like DH, digital cultures, and cultural analytics are indicative of several shifts in scholarship, pedagogy, and practice. On the one hand, alluding to the potential offered by democratizing technologies, but also reflecting persistent challenges related to the digital divide, and more specifically politics around the growth and sustenance of humanities disciplines. The growth of new areas of study and creative practice like DH has brought about a renewed focus on the creation of digital corpora and the need for new technologies and methods of research, more specifically through the development of digital pedagogies. The archive is such a space, concept, and method where a lot of early and ongoing DH conversations in India have been located and continues to inform the development of the field as research and practice depend upon creation and access to corpora of cultural content and importantly on the diversity of their use in both academic and creative practice. Even as state archives continue today as remnants of a colonial past, the decolonization of the archive has become an important part of understanding how cultural and technological histories are produced today. This often takes several forms in terms of interrogating its colonial legacy, questioning the commodification of the archive, and recognizing that the seemingly neutral Western criteria and classifications are in fact tools for maintaining the role of an archive as an imperial project of domination and affirmation. This is a quote from a volume called Decolonizing Archives. While this imagination of state archives continues to prevail, also rendering these spaces as active sites of politics, resistance, and alterity, there are archival mechanisms developing in different, um, with different kinds of stakeholders, ranging from private institutions to individuals, with access to diverse avenues of funding. These changes have been contemporaneous with the growth of the internet, also in many ways an archive in itself, facilitating, the, facilitating infrastructure such as open source content management systems to web annotation tools. These efforts present advancements in methods of preservation, curation and dissemination, and specific concerns related to access, infrastructure, and linguistic values. This presentation draws upon several learnings from a study on mapping the field of digital humanities in India which explored em emerging digital practices in arts and humanities in India across academic and creative spaces. Uh, a more recent project on developing an IPR advisory for um, a large government um, audiovisual cultural archive uh, under the Aegis of the Ministry of Culture. And ongoing conversations and writing on digital cultural archiving practices in uh, India. It seeks to understand the politics of archiving in a post-colonial and now digital context and how these mirrored histories of digitalization continue to shape tensions and growth in fields like DH and uh, in the global context. So just to talk a little bit about digital humanities itself and conversations around DH in India. Uh, DH continues to remain a field of much debate in academia and in spaces of policy and practice today with several perspectives on what exactly constitutes the field its methodology and scope, and most importantly, its epistemological state. 
as we see emerging work that cuts across different disciplinary and methodological silos and much exploration of its potential for collaborative work, new lines are also being drawn within research, academia, and creative practices. As a result, an Anglo-centric history of DH located in humanities computing and textual studies and its contextualization largely within European and American academia is represented as a global history of DH. This narrative, of course, has been met with resistance in different parts of the world from practitioners, from scholars, uh, and also an increasing need for a more global perspective, as is evident in fields like global and post-global DH. In India, there's been little effort so far in bringing in more intersectional perspectives, say of caste, gender, sexuality, accessibility, etc., in work on digital humanities and related fields. This lacuna also urges the need to locate present debates around DH and related digital practice in India within a wider imagination of the digital and what it implies across different contexts, especially in countries in the global south, drawing upon existing trajectories of digitalization which also have a rich history of concepts, methods, and practices that seem to have come together at this particular moment to be identified with DH. So moving on now to digitization and the archival term, uh, which is largely also seen as a movement from state to personal archives, so the growth of a lot of personal archives. A lot of early work in DH has been focused around the practice of digital archiving and curation and it continues to be an important thematic focus in the field today. Though primarily undertaken with the object of preservation, the digital turn has brought about a change in the nature and scope of archives in terms of promoting better public access and use of archival material. The digitalization of existing, digitization of existing corpora of cultural content, whether located in state archives, collaborative rep repositories, or private collections, is an important component of such archival mission. In India, like with many parts of the world, the imagination of the archive has largely remained rooted in colonial contexts of administration and governance, which continues to define much of the practice and scholarship around it today. While there have been several paradigm shifts in archival practice, as Terry Cook suggests, moving from judicial legacy to cultural memory to societal engagement to now community archiving, its colonial legacies have shaped both the practice and politics of these transformations, both culturally and technologically. The concept of the archive, therefore, still has a strong relationship with the exercise of power within the nation state, and is especially visible now in efforts to unpack and decolonize this particular mode of framing digitization efforts at archival and other memory institutions. Large state institutions in India, such as the National Archives and various state archives, have been the traditional stakeholders in this space, and have therefore have also been in control of its access and interpretation which is still drawn from colonial legacies and indeed its particular implications of caste, class, and gender. This is also indicated from the fact that histories of archival practice in India are therefore not homogenous, as also practices of digitization. Within these, there is a substantial diversity, as illustrated by some of the examples of archival initiatives outlined here. The advent of the internet and digital technologies in the last decade or so, however, has led to a shift in this particular imagination of the concept of the archive as primarily a repository space for history and memory, with the digital archive often blurring the line between these two. The archival object has been transformed greatly with digitization, where now apart from text, images, audiovisual material, oral histories, performance, and works in new media also come within the ambit of archival work. Traditional challenges of archival management, such as storage, curation, and dissemination, continue to persist in the digital domain as well, along with new questions emerging around digitized or born digital content, especially those related to access, infrastructure, and language. A lot of new archival initiatives are focused on developing accessible network and dynamic archives that are able to address the above challenges. Some efforts in digitization and collection emerging in this context include state archives, such as the National Digital Library of India, which is actually a digital library, but important in terms of understanding what kinds of digitization practices form a history to digital cultural archiving. Um, the National Museum Collections, uh, the National Audiovisual Cultural Archive, and uh, there are also archival efforts at universities and academic institutions like the American Institute for Indian Studies, Jadavpur University, Ambedkar University. 
um, as well as private individual and collaborative efforts such as the Indian Memory Project, uh, 1947 Partition Archive, Indian Cinema and Padma. So these are just screenshots of some of these projects that I have mentioned. Um, these projects, however, do not present an exhaustive picture of digita digitization and archival efforts, or indeed the scope of DH work. Rather, it would be pertinent to locate them within larger, larger histories of digitization in India, which trace different trajectories through efforts in education, science and technology, and cultural heritage. So I would briefly like to talk about the IGNC, which is the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts, and a large National Cultural Audiovisual Archive that uh, has been set up by this institution. The National Cultural Audiovisual Archives project is imagined as an expansive, dynamic, and interactive digital repository of Indian cultural knowledge, spanning over diverse genres, media forms, and periods of time. The primary objective being to maximize the reach of the NCA in terms of both affordability and accessibility while ensuring sustainable and responsible archiving and reuse while adopting the archival sharing usage and productive possibilities enabled by digital technologies. Cultural informatics and digital humanities, as well as practices of GLAM, which is galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, offer crucial lens, lenses to imagine and shape such a national repository. So there have been, of course, different kinds of challenges, challenges and uh, several learnings from, uh, of course, the process of setting up this repository of uh, this archive and uh, of course our engagement with this project. Primarily of course concerns related to IPR and legal aspects of open access. Uh, this includes challenges of um, say broader concerns around digitization and open access among memory institutions where there are apprehensions not only around the technical aspects of digitization but also around ownership and control, privacy and misuse of cultural content. Pre-digitization emerging as a complex process uh, where there are several challenges at every level from acquiring content to its accession, storage and cataloging, cross-referencing of metadata, open access to, sorry, um, open access to cultural data, metadata and benchmarking of these practices, uh, opening up of cultural data, especially metadata in the form of linked open data, is instru instrumental in achieving the objective of making cultural heritage more publicly accessible. Access to such data directs more users to online content, for example, through better search and retrieval for making content available for users in Wikipedia. Further, it also fosters more collaborative and participatory approaches and development of innovative products and methods of reusing cultural content. The role of digital curation uh, where data curation is a broader exercise in contextualizing information on the web with both online and offline activities. Curation of digital content is a complex process and a number of, uh, and a number of new tools and methods may be employed to aid the process, but with due attention to concerns of Indian language content and rare materials. Web annotation, data, visualization tools, etc. are the methods that will be useful for curation and presentation of digital cultural content. There's also a need for greater interoperability to enable collaboration with diverse stakeholders. So this includes collaboration with diverse public and private stakeholders, um, which uh, say stronger partnerships with initiatives like LAM Wiki or Open GLAM and Open Culture Data Network, which would be one way to enable or encourage better access to cultural heritage content. Importantly, the creation and use of digital cultural archives is also dependent on navigating new ways of using digital tools and understanding its role in research practice and pedagogy. With the proliferation of devices like the smartphone and the growth of social media, documentation and sharing has become quicker, easier, and more diverse. There's also facilitating the growth of numerous personal collections. The entry of private archival initiatives, often by individuals and institutions such as universities, has further changed the landscape of archival work in India. With the rise of more niche and private archival spaces today, questions of privacy, ownership, and access have acquired another dimension, as a lot of content is personal and often documentation of the everyday, rather than specific historical events, figures, or cultural forms. An illustrative example of this is the Indian Memory Project, an online curated visual narrative-based archive that traces the history and identities of the Indian subcontinent via photographs and letters found in personal archives. 
Founded in 2010 by Anusha Yadav, a photographer and graphic designer who later also went, went on to set up the memory company, an interdisciplinary space for visual arts practice. The archive presently features 188 curated stories framed around photographs and letters from the pre-digital era. As Anusha recounts, the archive essentially began as a Facebook group for a book project on Indian weddings at a time when crowdsourcing photographs and importantly stories around the Indian subcontinent from different perspectives, uh, which he realized could be explored further, contributing therefore to multiple histories. The project has since grown in popularity as it has found resonance with diverse sets of users in academia, media, and creative industries in India and abroad. As with most private, individual, and largely volunteer-driven efforts, there are significant challenges in terms of sustainability and diversification of content. For example, to incorporate other kinds of visual material or content in Indian languages, which require a certain level of technological and infrastructural support. Importantly, the project is illustrative of how the concept of the archive has transformed with the advent of the digital, where it has become participatory and generative in nature through the creation of prosumers, who also have a role in the production of cultural content and history. As Katya Mueller notes in her study on the project, the archive has a stake in the production of history, but at the same time, owing to its participatory nature, blurs the line between such history writing and commemorative practices. That's also prompting a redefinition of how we understand the concept of lived and archived memory, and indeed the concept of the archive itself. So to move on now to just um, a set of challenges and learnings emerging from the mapping digital humanities work that we did, and now of course ongoing conversations on understanding digital cultural archival practices in India. So some of the challenges and learnings uh, of you know, uh, engaging with the creation of these new archives or research on new kinds of digital archives and truth. Changes in the concept of the archive and the archival object, which is the use of digital technologies in the creation and circulation of cultural artifacts also results in new I don't know what that kinds of archival objects, which require different methods of preservation, curation, and dissemination. Preservation of analog and digital materials, taking into account changes in format and technological obsolescence is particularly important here. Roles and modes of curation. So the idea of the curator as a custodian or guardian of the archive changes greatly with digital and open access archives. So maintaining cross-referencing and metadata standards and adapting to new roles and forms of digital curation is then crucial. Access and accessibility are um, uh, another, is another important concern. Making the material discoverable and usable is crucial, while at the same time addressing questions of privacy and transparency, especially in the case of rare and sensitive material. Uh, this includes, again, addressing linguistic barriers, uh, issues like OCR and Unicode support for Indian language fonts. Uh, accessibility of platforms for people with disabilities is another crucial area of concern. Archival labor emerges as an important question, question here, both in terms of working with analog content, but also its transition to the digital from sourcing and acquiring new content, accessioning and digitization, to maintaining the quality of preservation and developing new methods of outreach while navigating concerns of rights, privacy, and censorship. The labor involved is tremendous, but often remains largely invisible. Uh, training and capacity building then is a follow-up question, uh, where, where while many of the institutions mentioned, including state archives, do offer such training, these capacities are also developed around specific institutional interests and requirements. And while difficult, may need to be benchmarked to some degree so that they may be replicated across different kinds of organizations or projects. Archive building as a collaborative interdisciplinary exercise, uh, the creation, use, and sustenance of an archive needs expertise across several domains, and this is necessarily a creative and collaborative exercise, which is more community-driven today. There is a need, therefore, to foster dialogue with people across different disciplines and institutions, so as to avoid knowledge gaps at the conceptual and material levels of creating and maintaining an archive. Computational possibilities, which, uh, of course, the field of digital humanities has engaged most closely with, the possibilities opened up by new tools and platforms that can work with digital, archive, digital artifacts in Manipur today, given the amount of data produced as part of documentation of cultural heritage. 
processes like curation, annotation, referencing, visualization, and abstraction become very important then in working with digital content. Um, infrastructure and design, finally, are two important technological, conceptual, and political questions that emerge in this discussion around digital humanities. Even with an interest in the opportunities afforded by the technological advancement and innovation, the lack of access to funding, expertise, and of course, uh, adequate and advanced physical and technological infrastructures, such as computational methods, often limits the kind of work that can be done with, with digital artifacts. Uh, to conclude, finally, uh, importantly, coming back to the question of DH itself, there is a need to locate this discourse within a renewed engagement with the politics and practice of humanities. As uh, Parna Balachandran notes in some of her writing, uh, also in an interview, what, what new epistemic possibilities are being created here by the advent of digitization or the creation of a digital cultural object through these archives is a pertinent question to ask. Do they still follow the established pattern of creating narratives of national significance, like with colonial archives? Where and how do they inform disciplinary concerns around history and history writing, for instance? And where are they creating the space for alter alterity and resistance? The invisibilities and oppressions within colonial archives of race, religion, caste, gender, language, sexuality, and disability also highlight important and continuing asymmetries of power and how we access, document, collect, record, and circulate both in online and offline worlds. Digital archiving then becomes a political practice to counter such hegemonies in knowledge production through its contribution, for example, to feminist uh, or feminist and anti-caste discourse, for example, by actively harnessing this prolific moment of digital content creation and also through other forms such as publishing, activism, and creative practice. Thank you so much.